for Austin Tech uh, is uh, Senator Hawley. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, thanks to the witnesses for being here. Uh, let me start with you, uh, Chairwoman Khan. A couple of months ago, I sent you a letter and the other commissioners as well regarding Amazon's acquisition of One Life Healthcare, uh, which of course is a medical company that oversees a pretty extensive network of primary care providers. And I urge you and, and the other commissioners to scrutinize this transaction very, very closely. Part of my concern is, as I hope you appreciate, is that this is not an isolated case. Amazon has displayed a distinct interest in getting to the healthcare business on a very broad scale. Is this concerning to you? Let me just start there. Without speaking about any specific transaction, both digital markets and healthcare are top concerns, and the type of expansion that we see, in particular by dominant platforms, is something we're looking at closely. Good. Uh, in your written testimony, you listed a number of examples of mergers that threaten to raise healthcare costs and cut services. Let me just ask you in general, as far as you're aware, have consolidations in the healthcare industry redounded to the benefit of patients? Specifically, have they reduced costs to patients? The economic literature that I've seen on that doesn't suggest that it has. Uh, why is that? Well, the way the, our free market economy works is that it's really competition that leads to lower prices. And if you don't have competition, firms are, can instead be incentivized to raise prices. We've also seen quality degradation where patients see worse health outcomes when you see this type of consolidation as well. So we're talking about price, but we're also talking about life and death. Well, it doesn't sound to me like there's any good reason to think that Amazon's entry in this space would be good for consumers, but um, I, I look forward to your scrutiny of this. Let me just ask you, still on this topic, what concerns we should be looking at involving data privacy uh, that uh, might come about from either this acquisition or more broadly about mass consolidation, particularly when you have technology companies that are purchasing healthcare companies? Yeah, I mean, again, speaking um, more generally, I think especially when you have firms that are integrated across multiple lines of business, there are a whole set of conflicts of interest that can emerge. Um, oftentimes, there aren't any limitations on how data being collected in one line of business is being used in other lines of business. And so we've heard concerns both from uh, consumers, but also from market participants about just the deep conflicts and asymmetries that that can create. Very good. Um let me ask you about uh, the FTC's work and relationship with regard to big tech, and in particular, something that you and I have discussed in the past, and you alluded to this earlier today, is that the FTC's historic practice has been to levy what appear to be large fines on paper, but we know that the technology companies, Facebook, for example, the FTC leveled, I think, a $5 billion fine. Facebook, Facebook stock went up when this happened. They don't regard it as particularly significant. They don't change their behavior. Tell us about the need to to take on these companies when it comes to the remedies in a more meaningful way. What, do, what are you doing about that? What do you see the the right approach being? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Um, we're, we're taking a more fulsome look at our remedial toolkit in addition to naming individual executives where appropriate. We've also started requiring deletion of data. So we really want to make sure with a remedy that the lawbreaker is not benefiting from the fruits of its misconduct. And so in instances where data is unlawfully acquired, we're requiring that it be deleted as well as any algorithms. Uh, we have a whole set of really terrific technologists on board that are making sure that our remedies are actually being effective, especially in these types of instances. Very good. Uh, let me just give you a, a chance now to, to respond to some of your critics. Senator Blackburn raised an important point about uh, this outside group that you you spoke to whose, whose views they regard the, the market economy as, as a fundamental failure. They take a, they advocate Marxist policies. I assume these are not your views personally. That's correct. Uh, this was a student group. Uh, we're really encouraged by the degree of student interest in antitrust enforcement. And so sometimes we do these events uh, with the aim of, of encouraging folks to come to the FTC. Tell us uh, just about your own, I mean, my view is, as somebody who supports antitrust, antitrust is integral to the operation of the market economy. I, I'm, I'm a capitalist unabashedly. I'm pro-capitalism. I'm pro-free market economy. I think our free market economy operates on robust, with robust antitrust enforcement, robust, free, and fair competition. Can you speak to that at, at all? I couldn't agree more. Uh, robust competition and fair competition has long been critical to the free enterprise as well as core fundamental political liberties. I think the types of concentrations of power that we've seen in our economy, we now see how they both threaten our free market economy, but also core political liberties. And so I couldn't agree more with you on that. Let me that. ask you just about one other, one other point of criticism. I just want to make sure that there's nothing to this. There have been reports that your office has 
condition merger approval if only implicitly on whether companies have adopted what I would characterize as as leftist, liberal, environmental, social, and governance policies, ESG policies. In other words, the claim is that these companies are more likely to have their merger requests blocked if they aren't pushing things like, say, critical race theory in the workforce. Can you can you address that? That's incorrect. Candidly, something that we do see sometimes is firms come to us and say, hey, we're proposing this merger. We know you'll probably identify it as unlawful, but we'll make all of these ESG commitments, and you should take those as a reason to bless the merger. I personally never find that compelling. I don't think those types of ESG commitments or anything in that vein can ever rescue an illegal deal. Okay, and you and you would not in any way condition merger approval on the adoption of a particular set of ESG policies, just to be clear. If that's not happening, it wouldn't happen. Absolutely not. I think, in fact, the merger laws prohibit us from doing that. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Hawley. And next up is, who is here first? Is it Senator 